Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. First Corinthians chapter six, verses nineteen and twenty. So, if, you know, it should be familiar verses to everyone. The title message is: Are you happy living for yourself? Are you happy living for yourself? First Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen. The Bible says, "What knowing not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God." And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Brother Jay, can you prepare for the message? Just finally, first of all, thank you for salvation. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, down on the cross, and his precious blood to wash our sins away. And thank you for the indwelling Holy Ghost, whereby we are still until the we thank you for your work in this Bible. Amen. We thank you that you preserved it to this day where we can read, meditate, and memorize and tell others of your perfect word. Yes. We ask you that you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Speak to him, Lord. Uh, we need you, Lord God, in this wicked, sinful world. Lord God, constantly uh, bombarded with filth and sins, and we need some cleansing with your preaching, Lord God. Amen. Convict our hearts, Lord God. Convict our minds. Yes, please. Convict our ears. Convict everything within us, Lord God. Help us to change inside out, Lord. Please. And Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you that you would help each and every one of us to focus on your words. Amen. So please fill us here and those uh, also watching and listening online, pray that you fill them with the Holy Spirit as well. Lord, uh, you are coming back soon, and until you come back, help each and every one of us to fight the good fight of faith. Mm. Lord God, protect each and every one of us from devil's attacks, and we trust everything in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Are you happy living for yourself? I think many Christians, they <clears throat> tend to forget that, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, it's not just for people sitting next to you or in front of you, behind you. It's for everyone. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Why? And in your spirit, which are God's, because you are not your own anymore. When you're living for yourself, you'll never be happy. Whoever you are, you could succeed in your life. You become a CEO, you could become a millionaire, even a billionaire. You could marry the you know, spouse of your dreams. You could have the best children you've ever wanted to have. And you could have your mansions, you could have your cars, you could have anything. You could even work out and get some bodies that you want to get. However, when you're living for yourself, you will never be happy. You'll never get that happiness by living for yourself. Many Christians, they tend to live for God when they're going through tough times. You know, when you are going through tribulation, you tend to be closer to the Lord. So when you've been neglecting Word of God, when you've been neglecting prayer, when you've been neglecting witnessing, when you've been neglecting ministry, you know, but when you are going through fiery trials and tribulations, you tend to be closer to God. However, when things are going well into, in your own you know, situation, imagination, your context, you know, in your own lives, what happens is that you tend to stop living for God. And you're trying to find that happiness on your own. For example, you've been praying hard for certain prayer requests in your life, and God answers it by His grace, yes, right? Because God's going to answer yes, no, or maybe. And God somehow answered yes for you. And then after that yes, 
you know, instead of you being really, really thankful, like throughout, you are thankful for instant, and then you forget to thank him for the rest of the time. And then what happens? You try to create your own ways of happiness. For example, I mean, because this is a lot of people are, you know, adults here and adults listeners. You work hard, wherever it is, your business or your job. And you get your promotion or your business expense and you pray hard to God for it. And then suddenly, instead of thinking about God's things that you did continuously, instead of praying to him constantly over and over every day because of the prayer request that you had, suddenly you accomplish and receive what you wanted and you start distancing yourself from God. You know, because you wanted that thing, so you pray to God morning, noon, nighttime. Yeah. And now you got it. So what happens? You know, it's just an afterthought. Right. Now you're trying to create that happiness, what God has given you on your own. Yeah. So you're trying to resolve issues with your new promotion, new job, or you know, new business on your own. And then what happens? The burdens of the world gets you. Amen. You start distancing yourself from God. You weren't close as you were, right, before you got this answer prayer. Yeah. But that's the reality of almost all the Christians. Amen. Unless you experience it, unless you go through it, many times you won't even know. So a lot of the young people won't even know. They're like, oh, what does that even mean? You understand. When you graduate from college, you know, when you, you know, go to school and finish whatever schooling that you yes. do, and you face the realities of life, you're going you're gonna to understand. But it's a blessing for young people to be here and be able to keep the faith. Amen. How many young people are really happy living for yourself, right? A lot of cultures, especially Asian culture, you know, they're all about education, education, education. So you get A's, you know, you do well at school. But you don't find that happiness if you're doing it for yourself. You don't find that happiness if you're doing it for your family. You don't find that happiness if you're doing it for your cousins and grandparents. Why? Because if God does not get the glory and God closes the door, you could get degrees from Harvard, you could get degrees from, you know, any of these prestigious schools. You're not going to get the job that God's going to open the door for. And then you start blaming God. God, you know, I worked so hard. You know, I got all the best grades. I'm better than that person. But the thing is, you're bought with a price, but you're not giving glory to God. How can you be happy? It's so like each day you have to look at your heart. I mean, are you really happy living for yourself? You should never live for yourself as a Christian. Number one thing is that you got to live for God, right? Amen. you got to live for Lord Jesus Christ who saved you from hell. Thank you. Every decision that you make should be based upon how am I going to make him happy? How am I going to give him glory? I mean, it is a similar topic that you hear all the time, right? At the end of the day, preaching is supposed to prick your heart so that your behaviors will change, your yes. actions will change. Yes. And you know in deep inside, because if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know that I'm not my own anymore. I know that only joy I ever get is when I do something for Him. And that when I only do something for Him, bottom of my heart, then I feel happiness. If not, then you're always going to be a miserable Christian. I think the worst people, saddest people in the whole world are the Christians who have the truth, right? Who have eternal life, who have the right Bible and right doctrine, but doesn't live for God, who live for themselves. I mean, it's like this. You were given everything that you ever needed to succeed spiritually, and you willingly reject it. I mean, that's comparing someone who grew up in a, you know, billionaire's mansion with every opportunity possible, but like those children who get into drugs and they just die and, you know, waste their life away. As Christians and as a bible believing Christian, when you have all of this, why are you wasting it away each day? Because if you're not happy right now as a Christian, because you're not living for God, you're just living for yourself. And don't tell me that oh, I'm living for my wife, my husband. It's very important when that is higher than Lord Jesus Christ. When foundation is broken, then you will never stand still. You know, your 
wife, your husband, your children, your grandma, grandpa, your cousin, should never be on top of Lord Jesus Christ. If you truly look at your heart today, and if you don't see happiness and joy in your heart, it's just simple. You're not living for God. You're only living for yourself. And that self, to me, includes your family. Especially, you know, a lot of the cultures that are gathered here, you know, your family is like your number one, right? You know, but you got to break that mindset. Amen. If your family is going against God, they shouldn't be number one anyways. Yes. You should correct them. That's right. That includes your husband, your wife, yes. and your children. Amen. Your children is, oh, my child is the angel of the world. First of all, you don't even know what angel is, right? <laughs> angel is 33 and a half year old young man. So you're like, my child is an angel. <laughs> and your happiness is dependent upon your child. No. Right? Oh, yeah. My child got straight A's in elementary school, you know. Everybody gets straight A's in elementary school nowadays. Yeah. From what I hear, they don't even give out grades anymore. Wow. It's like, what is it? Like, you know, you're a good kid and, or you, you're a passing kid, satisfactory. I mean, we have kids who go to elementary school. And I was talking to a kid yesterday. He's like, yeah, yeah, they don't give A, B, C, Ds, and F anymore. Not even, I don't even know. So every child is a superstar in wow. elementary school nowadays, right? And now reality hits. You go to middle school, it's still easier. You go to high school, a little bit harder. And you go to college, and then you start facing life. Yes. You as a parent should never depend your happiness on the success of your children. Amen. Unfortunately, a lot of Bible-believing families think the same. You never change. You never can get rid of your culture and traditions out of your way. Then how are you going to be ever happy? Yeah. Right? Because all your happiness is based on your children. You know, the, one of the worst f statement for any unsaved and saved people is what? You're living your life through your children. You shouldn't live your life through your children. Right. They have their own life. Yes. And you have your own life. Yes. I mean, is your life that miserable that you have to live through your children? Uh -huh. I mean, that's not a Bible-believing way. No, sir. And you, as a parent... You know, you need to be a better example to your children. All right. If your child does his best, her best, and they don't get the best grace, encourage them. Yes. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, you in our family are the only person who didn't get A in that subject, right? What's wrong with your SAT score? What's wrong with your, and all those graduate score, right? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Did the college answer to you? you no. Know? <laughs> Did you get a yes or no, right? And you don't get accepted. And you shouldn't be depressed for like weeks because your child didn't get into a school. Yeah. And who cares, Amen. right? Amen. God blocked it because of you many times. <laughs> because of your, you know, greediness, because of your own desires, probably God's like, why, why, why would I let that happen right. when you're not going to give glory to me? Yes. People who give glory to God during the bad times, trials, and tribulation, they're the true, you know, soldiers of Christ. Amen. But people, whenever things go bad, you know, they, you know, reject God, you know, they blame God. You are the problem. If I act like that, I'm the problem. How dare we always blame God when anything goes wrong? Right. How are you ever going to be happy when you're always looking at your own life and don't even look at any, everything else, right? It's a famous, you know, statement, General Booth, you know, that it always resonates with me. It's like, you know, if someone asks on his deathbed, you know, what is, you know, what, what is your final words or final say, right? You know, some people might say, you know, I accomplish everything, you know. Some people might say, I have my millions and billions, you know. I'm proud of my children, you know. I'm proud of my success. But he just said one word. He said others. That's it. That's it. He found his happiness in others. Why? Because he was serving God. And what is the essential thing about serving God? It's about others. Because when you serve God, others always trumps over you. You want lost people to get saved, right? Yes. You want your brethren in the ministry to grow. Yes. You truly care about people in the body of Christ. 
That's why you're not happy when one of your brethren does well. You know, I hate that. I hate any Christian who gets jealous and envious and who's not happy when other brethren does well. Amen. I mean, are you really happy living for yourself? You know how much happy I am? You know, when good things happen to our brethren, yes. right? Especially those who are serving the Lord, right? From the bottom of their heart. Yes. I mean, they get a good job. You know, God Amen. blesses them. They get a good family, right? They grow spiritually. You know, those are good. Yes. But you, on the other hand, because you look at yourself and your children, like, you know, I didn't get in, my child didn't get into that school. Their child got in. God, you're unfair. You know, I hate them. But on Sundays, you're smiling. Hey, I'm so happy for you. You wow. know, give me a hug. Or you run after them, you know. Good, congratulations to the kid who got, who done well. But deep inside, you're like, I hate you, man. Yeah. I hate you, girl. You know, because, you know, you're better than my child. You know, I mean, you're, you're worse than an unsafe person. You know, yeah. unsafe people, they just look at gangs and mafias, right? You know, they have this true bond. They might not be safe, but there's things to be learned from. Loyalties, right? Sure. You know, I mean, especially if you're in the same line as the person that you serve, your boss, yeah. you're truly happy. You know, when boss does well, you know, the people in the family does well. Yes. But you as ch Christians, mm supposed to be in the same body of Christ, you're never happy yeah. when someone else does better than you. It's like this. As long as I make a million bucks and you make less than a million, I'm happy, right? You know, you used to make, you know, 20,000. Now you got, you're making 50,000. I'm so happy for you. But you don't say the full sentence. I'm so happy for you, but you're still lower than me, right? <laughs> you're still less than me. Right? What's wrong with Christians, yeah. right? You should be genuinely happy for your brethren when things, good things happen to them. Amen. If you are not truly happy for the body of Christ, you'll never be happy. Amen. You will never, ever be happy. It's like, my finger's doing good. I'm happy, yes. right? Yeah. You know, when I used to play a lot of basketball, I just sprained my fingers all the time. And it hurts. But when it's you know, normal, yeah. and it's, you know, good. it has a good function, I'm happy, yes. you know. Man, sometimes I get these cold sores in my mouth. Man, if you know about cold sores, it hurts. Yes. Man, it hurts so much. Like, I'm trying to swallow something, and my whole throat hurts, right? And when that goes away, I'm so happy, right? Yes. But you, as a Christian, you know, you love carrying your cold sores and canker sores on your body. Like, man, you know, it's like you have to feel that pain, right? Oh, I'm not, I'm so envious of my brethren. Oh, and then that, you know, canker or cold sore is like hurting you, you know? You're like, oh, man, you can never be satisfied, right. right? I mean, you have to get rid of that mindset. But if you got it from your parents, shame on your parents. But what do you have to follow? I mean, it's so wicked that I've, what, how are you different from all these cults and religions out there? Just following tradition after tradition. They don't need, they put the Bible on, uh, I mean, they just get rid of the Bible. Yeah. They don't even use it, right? How are you different when you're just going by your family's tradition? Same. My mom hated that person, so I'm going to hate that person too. You're dummy, right? That's right. It's like your mom was playing with the, you know, bomb, and then... You know, you have the bomb now. Yeah. You're still going to keep the bomb. You're going to still play with the bomb. Get You're going to still, it. you know, cherish the bomb. And one day it's going to explode. Yeah. I mean, thank God that, you know, but who knows? God is such a fair God, you reap what you sow. Yeah. I'm pretty sure your parent was miserable having that kind of mindset. Yeah. Because that God's, God's the most scientific person in the whole world. Amen. Forget about Einstein, Hawking, all those guys, you Gosh. know. If they didn't trust Christ. According to their testimony, they haven't, then they're burning in hell. That's it. But we have ultimate, you know, mathematician, scientist, perfectionist, Lord perfect. God. And he's perfect. Amen. So when it comes to your heart, he's perfect too. Yes, and if you did not give all your life to him since you got saved and you haven't confessed your sins, 
He's going to make you pay for it. Sometimes it's little by little. That's why some of your life is miserable, little by little. Yes. Yeah, little by little. Absolutely. You're re reaping what you've sown. Instead of complaining to God, ask God for more grace and be thankful to amen, God. Amen. That you're still alive and you could do something for him. Yes. Because some people, according to Romans 8, 13, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Yes. You know, they were the people who's trying to find happiness in their own life, living for themselves. They got into sin. They just live with, for their flesh, and they're dead. Yep. They might be in heaven, but they could have done a lot more for the Lord here. Yes. You have to take this warning seriously. Yes. I have to take it seriously. We're all same. We're all less than nothing in front of God. Amen. I mean, this is probably like, you know, one of the verses that people hate, but it's also a favorite verse, right? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. You know, I hear people say, amen. Probably you go to that verse and meditate on it a lot. I have to, you know, because pride always gets in the way. Pride always says you're better than something when we're not. Isaiah 40, verse 17. So today, if you thought you were something, just know that if you don't get anything out of this message, you're nothing, less than nothing. Only Thank way you. you could be something is through Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Only way you could be something is when you try to live your life to bring glory to God. Yes. That's it. Isaiah 40, verse 17, the Bible says, All nations before him are as nothing. Okay. Is that good enough? No. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Wow. Man, you and I are less than nothing. Amen. Don't be proud and saying I'm nothing. <laughs> you should be saying I'm less than nothing, right? <laughs> you know? You know, some people, I mean, that, that shows you. You're like, oh, you know, I'm nothing. You know, I'm nothing. No, no, no. Go to Isaiah 40, 17. You're less than nothing. I'm less than that thing. Man, God puts us in our place very quick. Thank you, God. Yeah. And when you realize that when you're less than that thing, you tend to, you know, live different life. Your heart tends to cling more unto the Lord, right? Why do you think that people who do not have a lot, they cling to things, you know, when some people provide it? Why? Right? You go to third world countries. You know, I mean, one of the saddest things is seeing a lot of children out living out on the street, yes. right? You know, because of the mistakes of their government and their parents, right? You know, and you have a lot of orphans out there. Right? And, you know, they have no running water. The sad, uh, especially sad part is Africa, right? Yes. Africa, I mean, they're happy just drinking milk. Water is always tainted. They don't have clean water. And when they get to eat some meal, especially meat, they're the happiest kids ever. Yes. Right? If some, you know, missionary or charity or any government goes out to their organization and provide them with a decent meal, they're the happiest kid. They're happy for a whole week, right? Because they got to experience eating some meat. But for you and me, you know, we're always complaining. Yes. Right? You know, we always think that we're something. What if you and I were born in that country and we didn't get to experience these luxuries of America? Yeah. What if you and I were born into a spot where our parents, you know, forsook us and we became all orphans and you had to take care of your own and you had to take care of your siblings, right? Yes. Where are you finding your happiness? Those children are just happy to have a good meal. Those children are happy just to you know, sleep at a somewhere where it's not super cold or super hot. Right. They're just happy to even have a shoes. Do you know a lot of those children don't even have shoes? Right. Right. If they do have shoes, you, know, you could see their toes everywhere. Yes. Right. And you complain. You're like, I can't find happiness in my life. Why am I so miserable as a Christian? You know why? Because you're just living for yourself. Amen. Have you ever thought about, you know, those folks out there? Obviously, you want to pray for those lost souls. Yes. Not just here in America. 
Think about third world countries, Amen. right? I mean, the young people here, our young kids who always complain to their parents about food, technology, clothes, and everything that they don't have that other kids have, man, you should live in a third country for a month. Yes. About a week. Let's go. Where you have to walk three hours to school. Amen. You have to go through the jungles. Yeah. You have to go through the snakes. You have to go through, I mean, rains, everything. And you're complaining that, oh, I don't have my PS5. I don't have the latest iPhone. You know, I don't have this, you know, brand name bags, brand name clothes, brand name, you know, shoes. But they think like that because of public school system. And they think like that because of you, parents. Yes. You're the example. Yes. If you instill in them that, hey, I want you to have the best of the best, and if you don't get it, you should be ashamed. Don't play with kids who doesn't do those things. Wow. Man, shame on you. Who are you? According to Isaiah 40, 17, you're less than nothing. Amen. Who are you to tell your children that your children is better than someone else? Right. It doesn't matter. In the sight of God, Either you're a saved child or unsaved child, right? Yes. yes. But in the bigger things, you're less than nothing. Yes. How are you training your children up? If I, I mean, our teachers, you know, especially at a Bible-believing church, our teachers have a tough time because our children, parents do, don't do their job. So they bring all the junk on Sunday and our teachers are trying to wash that away. Yes. But do you think that could be washed away within that 20, 35 minutes of teaching? No. Everything? No. It probably gets one third away. And then you go back home, your parents just teaching them stupid and wicked stuff over and over. Then they come back. And then you blame your Bible believing teachers, right? Sunday school teacher. Oh, you know, they don't teach well. You are the problem. Oh, you know, my, my, my child says, you know, their hairs were messed up today. You know, it wasn't as proper. I mean, and when your child is speaking bad words left and right, yeah. oh, you know, those teachers, you know, you know, they don't do a better job. I mean, who are you? You don't do the best job at home and you're blaming your Sunday school teachers right. and pastors, right? Sometimes you're too scared to blame the pastors, right? And the pastors, why? Because you know the stories of, you know, Moses and stuff, Israelite. So we can't touch the, you know, the people on top. But man, people underneath, we're going to, you know, trample all over them. You know, that's your mindset. That's why you're not happy. All you're doing is being complainers and murmurs. Yes. You can never be happy and you can never be thankful. You can never praise God for everything that has given you. Obviously, if you are unhappy, you're not a thankful person. Right. And if you're not a thankful person, you're a proud person. Yes. Right? They all go hand in hand. Amen. Right? If you are unthankful, proud, then what do you think you are? You're ungodly. Right? Yes. You know, you Christian is very ungodly people. Right? Congregation here, whether you like it or not, you can get very ungodly. Amen. Your mind is very ungodly. Yes. Right? So what is, I mean, ungodly? Man is, you know, I mean, wicked, perverse, irre, irre, irreverent, without value. Right? You know, your outstanding character, ungodly person, is to leave God out of your thoughts and conversations and conduct. So you don't care about godly things in your heart. You don't want to think about things of God. So you're full of all your own actions. That's why you're ungodly. I mean, when you don't think about Lord in every part of your decision, what's happening? You're being ungodly. Yes. I mean, let's go to, let's look at the verse. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. We'll start looking at from verse 11. Titus chapter 2. Just think about how ungodly you've been. 
how ungodly you've been to God, how ungodly you've been to your family, your children, how ungodly you've been to the world. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. The Bible says, Titus 2, 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So this grace of God is Jesus Christ. And this is not something, you know, Calvinists could break. It's given to all men, right? Amen. Salvation is given to all men. Amen. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness, ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world. So we're talking about this present world. You and I are supposed to deny ungodliness, worldly lusts, and live soberly, righteously, and godly. In verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why some people are so happy, always. They have something to look forward to, appearing of Lord Jesus Christ, right? And you don't want your sins to appear when Lord appears. No. So, it goes hand in hand. You're living in sin. You're trying to live happy for yourself. All those sins will be appearing, right? And you'll be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. I mean, are you really zealous of good works? I mean, do you really want to, you know, do something good for the Lord, good for the brethren? Because a lot of people don't want to do anything good for the brethren, right? They want to do good something for the Lord, right? And they, those are the people who pride gets in the way and they're so proud. Like, I went to all the street preaching. Good for you. I led 1,000 people to the Lord last year. Good for you, right? So what's the point? Well, I want you to give me some applause. <laughs> I want you to say, you know, job well done. Dude, just wait. It's better that you get praise from God at the judgment then you get praise from men because all those things will disappear because that's your pride. You want it. And when we have testimony time and you genuinely want to encourage people, obviously, you know, that's good. Don't put it out of context when you're doing it to show off to people, right? right? That's why you shouldn't even come to street preaching if you don't have right heart. You shouldn't be witnessing without the right heart. You shouldn't be coming to church without the right heart. You know what happens? You know, you pollute the other brethren. I mean, obviously, you know, maybe you do need to be here just to get right with the Lord. But if that's your pattern, you know, don't think about one-offs. Because a lot of people try to be smart alecky and say, oh, you know, then you don't want me to come to church. That's not the point, right? According to Hebrews 10.25, you can't forsake the assembling of, you know, brethren. But if you're a heart, if you've been coming to church for years and years and months and months, and you never change, your heart is always rebellious, what's the point? Right? If we don't even have same doctrine, what's the point? You come here to always try to criticize the teachings and preachings and doctrines of the church. Why are you here? There's so many other people out there. Go over there. I mean, you're not going to be blessed. And a lot of times, you pollute the other brethren. And if I find out, I have to deal with you. And if you're, gonna ch- you're not going to change, you've got to leave. Right? Yes. So just think about that. And verse 14 says, we're peculiar people. Are you peculiar to unsaved people out there? Or are you the same? Mm. Right? If, I, if someone could say that I'm peculiar than them, especially in the worldly system out there, yeah. I'm happy. Amen. Because I'm doing my, I'm living for the Lord. It yeah. sounds like I'm living for the Lord, right? Yeah. But if someone asks, you know, your close friend or colleague at work or school, is, is she or is he a peculiar no, you know, they do, everything we, they do everything we do. You know, the conversation is the same, right? What do you think worldly conversation is all about? Yes. It's all about money. It's all about fame, right? Yes. It's all about, you know, immoral stuff. Absolutely. It's all about, you know, relationship outside of marriage, right? Yes. Infidelity, lust. All those things are all they talk about. Yes. And jokes about, you know, the word of God, you know? They blaspheme Jesus Christ left and right. Yes. I mean, then, if they don't think you're peculiar, something's wrong with you. 
You know what you are? If you're saved, you're the biggest backslidden Christian. Amen. That's what you are. I mean, backslidden, you know, it could equate to someone who's equal to the world yes. or similar to the world. I mean, if you don't stand up for the word of God, if you're not different, I mean, if you're not denying ungodliness and all the first I mean, teachings that we saw in verse 12 through 15, then you're the same. That's why I'm always careful, you know. If I'm not going to walk the walk and talk the talk, I shouldn't even say I'm a Christian out there. That's right. Why? Because if, if I'm not going to live for the Lord, I'm only going to bring bad name to his name, yeah. right? Yeah. Then I'm really going to be unhappy. Because God's not going to give you happiness. No way. I mean, he's fair God. Why would he? You know, when everybody else, according to the word of God, who disobeyed, and who was sneaky, you know, like, you know, I'm teaching Revelation, and, you know, we have a character like Balaam, right? Yes. And a lot of Christians are like modern-day Balaams. Yes. Right? You know, they're trying to not curse Israel. You know, they're trying to live as kind of godly as possible, as prophet of God, you know, but ulterior motive, the way of Balaam, what is it? Money, money, money. Yes. Love of money. First Timothy six ten. You know, root of all evil is love of money. Yeah. So you have the way of Balaam, just like Joe Austin, right? Yes. You know, just like you know, Falwell's out there, just like Warren Roberts. Everybody, Christian millionaires out there, yes. right? You know, Hitlers and all that stuff. Prosperity. You're no different. Amen. You're probably mad because you're not a millionaire just like them. Right. Yeah. But you're trying to go both ways. I mean, what really turned Balaam, right? Because, he, because Balaam said you could have a blank check. Mm. Yeah? It's like, you could have anything you want. Oh, man. You know, that ass, you know, stopped me from saying stuff, you know, three times, you know, because of the angel of the Lord was there. And, I, you know, I have to find a way. And you're very sneaky, Christians. You're very sneaky. Yes. You don't want to blaspheme God. You don't want to break the rules. You don't want God to curse you, you know, punish you. So you devise a way. Indirect sinners. You know, that's the worst. You don't want to fall by yourself. You don't want to fall at all. So you tell, just like Balaam the Balak, well, this is how you do it to destroy Israelites, mm -hmm. right? Just, just get him in her Mary. Just get him in her Mary. And sooner than later, they're going to start worshiping idols. Right. Then God has to punish them and kill them. Yes. My hand is clean, you say. You know, my hand is clean. You know, I didn't curse. I just gave a little advice, you know, to Balak, right? You're same. I mean, a lot of Christians, because you're such a coward Christian, you can't even sin. <laughs> How should I say it? Like a man, right? You, you sin like a weasel. <laughs> what does that even mean? Yeah. Because you're so afraid of God, but you still want that, you know, your own pleasure. You go around, you think, and you start manipulating others. Yeah. You start giving excuses. God, you know, my boss told me to work the weekends for the next four months, so I can't go to church anymore. When you knew, when you took the job, that you're going to have to work those hours. You're like, ah, you know, you understand me, right? You know? But you were the problem since the beginning, right? Yes. You're like, God, I can't go to church anymore, you know. I married this unbeliever, you know. It's like, ah. Oh. You know, I mean, when, when Bible clear says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, you disobey that verse, and you're yeah. like, God, you know. I'm still trying to witness to that person. You know, I want that person to get saved. You know, I mean, God. So, just understand, my life is mess. You know, not because of me, but because of that person that you made me marry. Oh, <laughs> always say that, right? You're like, you made me marry that person. You know, no, you deceive your own self. Yeah. That's what happened to Balaam. Balaam had three things to do in Numbers 20:22. 20, he did one out of three. He didn't tell the whole truth. You know what's the difference between Bible-believing 
preachers and all these false fakes out there, Bible-believing Christians and all these fakes out there, we preach everything from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Things that people don't want to hear. Yes. Everything. Preach about sin. Preach about hell. Yes. Right? Amen. We don't preach one out of three. You know, I told Wednesday people, you don't want to be a one-third Christian. No, right? sir. Don't be a 33% Christian. <laughs> right? What about other 66.7%? You're not a, that, that means that it's not even majority. How can you find happiness when you're only a one-third Christian? Right? It's like this. When you're preaching or witnessing to someone, God is love, God is love, God is love. Right? And you don't even tell them about deity of Christ. You don't even tell them about hell. No. Right? God is love, God is love, pray after me. They don't even know they're a sinner on their way to hell. They don't even believe Jesus is God. And they just say, Jesus, save me. What? And then they don't even, they are not even repenting, right? And that is the false, they, they, that's what you call a vain, vainly receiving Amen. the gospel. Right. You have to tell everything. Yes. I mean, that's why, you know, we tell, that's why our church, we have a streak, you know, Adherence to the same doctrine, yes. right? I mean, God used Dr. Ruckman, right? Amen. You know, unless otherwise noted, we're going to follow, you know, his teachings, right? Yes. You know, not because he's idol. No, because God used him to yes. teach the right things. Same thing, right? During the Paul's days, God used Paul, yes. right? Amen. So, we, I mean, that's why, you know, people follow Paul who follow the right doctrine. So it's up to you. You have to understand that, you know, man... As a Christian, spiritually speaking, man, have I been that love, love, love crowd, right? You know what's the characteristic of those love, love, love crowd? They're a bunch of fornicators. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're a bunch of fornicators. Yes. Why? Because it's all about procreation. It's all about God is love, right? That's why those cults out there, they have a very two common characteristic. And you better not be that Christian who falls into it and lose your happiness once and for all. What is it? Love of money and fornication. Yep. Money is your idol. And then it leads to fornication. Yes. Adultery. Whoremongering. Same thing happened during the you know, days of Israelites. Why do you think that it's not happening right now? Why do you think that you know, Titus 2, 12 says, you know, in this present world, right now. Their present world, our present world, this present world. So what are you doing about it? I mean, are you denying ungodliness, right? So ungodliness just simply is living as though God were not to be respected, revered, or feared. Right? Don't think about it like that. You know? When you don't fear God, you're living ungodly life. Yes. Simple as that. If all of your thoughts and actions are not occurring to the fear of God, then you're living ungodly. Simple, right? Some people, a lot of people ask that question. What does it mean to live ungodly? You live your life without fearing God. Simple as that. But if you want to live godly, you know, someone who lives godly is a person who has God in his thoughts and his actions all the time. Amen. If you have God, in your thoughts and in your actions all the time, then you got to live godly. Because you truly know who he is. You consult God for everything before anything you do. Yes. That Nehemiah prayer just is part of your life. Amen. And it's not only that moment, because Nehemiah 1.5, Nehemiah is a man of prayer already. So don't think that yes. you're going to start becoming a man of prayer, you know, just praying three seconds at a time, right? No, you pray, and you pray, and you pray regularly. And you look at things the way God will look at. And how are you going to do that? By studying the Word of God, by reading the Word of God. That's why if you're not in the Word of God, you can't be happy, because you're not going to see things from God's point of view. Then if you don't see things from God's point of view, whose point of view are you going to see from? You which includes the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's why you are not happy. 
We're peculiar should be you. We're peculiar should be me. Even amongst the Bible-believing circle, you and I should be peculiar, right? There's so many so-called Bible believers out there, but who can't handle deep doctrines. They don't want to go to Revelation too much, right? Why? Because they can't handle it. They don't want to go to, you know, election. They don't want to go to any of this deep stuff, right? But you are supposed to. You know, if, you, if you deny any part of the Word of God, you'll never be happy, right? How can you say, I'm happy, when you don't follow everything in the Word of God, believe everything, rightly dividing the Word of truth, right? You won't be. That's why, as a Christian, you have to, you know, judge yourself. You know, in conclusion, think about your walk with the Lord. How has it been lately, right? Yes. I mean, it's not about, I'm not talking about yesterday. I'm not talking about a week ago. I'm talking about throughout. Think about a period of a year. How has it been? Are you happy living for yourself when you reflect and go back and see all the days that you live for yourself? No. I'm pretty sure the answer is capital N-O. Yes, sir. Then why do you want to live a capital N-O life all the time yeah. as a Christian? Like, as I mentioned during the message, you're given every blessing possible as a Christian. Yes. Man, I feel bad for the you know, online listener who doesn't have you know, local church to go to. People who's here especially, you have a place to go to. Amen. You could participate in the ministry, right? Amen. You could serve the Lord. Yes. You have the perfect word of God. Amen. You have the right doctrine. Yes. And it looks like you have able body to come and do things for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. What more do you need? Does God have to give you a million bucks for you to be happy? No, sir. Does God have to give you everything you need for you to be happy? You're a fool. Amen. You know, you have that insatiable desire, never-ending never desire of pleasure that your flesh wants. Get rid of it. Yes. So think about how you've been living Christian life. If there are things for you to get right with the Lord, don't wait. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until tonight. Get right with the Lord right now. Amen. Right? Live a life that's happy, serving the Lord. Yes. And be that good exemplary Christian to your family, right? Yes. To your society as a peculiar people Amen. and to the ministry. Let's pray. There, Father, we come before you. Thank you for saving us from hell, but many times we're not that joyful, happy Christian because we live our life for ourselves. Each person is living for themselves instead of living for you and others. Help us to get right with you, Lord. Help us to confess our sins of this selfishness and pride that's gotten hold of our hearts, Lord God. And I pray that we'll be those peculiar people to this saved and unsaved world out there. We're zealous of good works. We want souls to get saved. Our desire is not the love of money or the fame and anything, but to serve you and bring glory to you, finding joy in bringing happiness to you, finding joy seeing souls to get saved, finding joy seeing good things happen to our body of Christ, Lord. I pray that you bless the rest of the services today and above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.